Hey everyone, Cynix here. It's time for another episode of Pain Over Pals. I have a handful of Patreon submissions here and I'll be trying my best to offer some constructive Pain Over advice. As always, I encourage you to critique along at home. But anyway, let's just get right into it. First up is a painting by We Do 3. Now it's definitely very saturated in the background, but the first thing that really jumps out at me is just some slight compositional tangents. I'm definitely a stickler for tangents, and that little tangent open area on the side of the character, as well as the head just kissing right up against the top of the frame, those things kind of irk me a little bit. Luckily, those are super easy to fix. We can just recrop the image. I guess ideally I could have recropped it higher, but I was just extra lazy and didn't want to have to paint a little more blue in there. I can also try to make the body a little less boxy, but I think the main thing I want to focus on with this paint over critique is simplifying the pooling of values and colors and shapes. You can see this most specifically on the hair. The way the hair is now, there's a lot of little stranded areas of light and darkness and thin little lines which you never want to have in your hair. I know that sounds weird, you know, you think you want thin little lines because it's, it's like hairy and stuff. But the more you can pool all of these values together, the more graphical it can be. And also, importantly, the less focus and contrast it will create. Because, of course, contrast creates focus, and we don't want the focus to be on some random little corner of the hair. We want it to be on the face. I'm going to try to not change too much. I'm just going to keep what you have, but do minor improvements to the shapes and the highlights in the hair, just to kind of slightly make them more graphical and not leave any little stranded islands and pockets of light. Well, that's, that's not entirely accurate. You can leave little pockets as long as they make a logical sense and they work with the flow and graphical nature of things. And as long as I'm gonna keep rambling about the hair, one thing that I always try to watch out for, and maybe you did it on purpose, but I never like it if the hair feels like it's too flat up against the skull. Hair has volume, and it's important that you show that. You don't want the hair to feel like a texture on top of the skull. You want it to feel like an actual thing which has mass. So I'm just going to poof out the hair just a little bit off the skull and then bring in a little bit more form to the bangs as well because right now they're very evenly separated into even little chunks and we always want to make sure if things are graphical and dynamic that there's a nice hierarchy to the shapes. So we need some that are bigger and some that go into smaller, less important shapes. I hinted at a little bit of bounce light in some of the bigger shadows, but the last thing I'll really do is just blend things. Soften all the edges that don't actually have hard planes in them. Especially with this lighting scheme I feel like you established, so we might as well just soften everything up. We never want a shadow on both sides of the nose that feels too strong anyway. So just softening everything, blurring it out just a little bit with an airbrush, that'll go a long way to making it look a little bit more finished. And if the skin tone is nice and soft, that lets you really focus on the important things, which are the eyes, where you can really draw in the viewer's attention. I think that's about enough, so let's just call this first paint over done. Next up, let's see what our old paint over pal regular Brian is up to. First of all, you definitely got me with this hand. I do like to make my index fingers extra long. Although to be fair, I think making it look extra long is usually just meant to be a perceptive thing. For example, angling the hand in a way that makes it look longer than it is for the sake of graphical flow and everything. However, if you are just viewing a hand from the most neutral position, you can't really get away with twisting the anatomy quite that much. Well, maybe I could, but I don't think you can just yet. So I'm going to shrink that index finger down just a bit. And also, let's make sure the thumb originates from the lowest portion of the palm. I think ideally you should always just be thinking about it as taking up like the bottom half of the palm. Anyway, enough about hands. Let's get back to doing our little faces. So it looks like you're still running into a few issues here and there. They've definitely improved over the months, but I still feel like you're trying to cram in a little bit too much information in some of this stuff. 
you should really be focusing on simplifying your shapes, especially head shapes. You can try to implement a little bit of subtlety once you feel like you really started to nail everything. But I feel like at this point, you should still stick to very simplified head shapes and just focus on the right proportions of everything. You always need to be willing to step back and just let everything breathe in its simplicity. I feel like the goal for getting good at anatomy is just going for the maximum appeal with the simplest geometry. I think mouth heights are still a bit off. Just remember from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin, the mouth should be a little bit above that halfway point. They feel like they're starting to slip and slide toward the bottom of the face. Other things to note, I feel like the eyes are getting a little bit long. Maybe wide is a better word. I don't know what the right word is. Anytime I see an eye, I always try to picture the eyeball that would form behind the eye. And I feel like this eyeball would be huge just because this eye is so long. So we can kind of squish that down a little bit. And still speaking of proportions, this grumpy looking face on the bottom, I feel like it needs some proportional work as well. So I always like to picture some kind of triangular shape when I'm placing my eyes and my nose throughout the middle of the face. And that triangle really needs to feel believable and capture the proportions of the character. I feel like just visualizing that triangle anytime you draw a face for some reason helps, even if it's not a very specific science to it, just always visualizing that triangle just seems to be a good mental check. All right, so I guess that's pretty much all I have for you this time, Brian. Just keep working on proportions. Keep it simple, mainly. That's the most important thing. But jumping into another painting, this one is by Rob. There are a lot of good things going on in this image. I definitely like some of the stuff you're going for, but I think the easiest level of improvement is in the graphical department. You see this smoke over here? I guess, I, I hope it's supposed to be smoke but it can really improve its graphical appeal, and I think that will raise the feel of the whole image. So I'm just gonna quickly go over that. You wanna feel the artist's touch in these shapes. Make them nice and exciting. You can't just go for a giant blob. That's not really appealing to anyone. Anyway, one main issue I could potentially see is the continuity of the lighting. It kind of feels like if I were to follow it from this bun on the back of her head, that the lighting actually doesn't match up. Like we got this big shadow off the bun, so you would think the lighting would be farther from the back, yet there's a lot of lighting on the side of the face that feels like the lighting should be on the other side of the person. So there's a little bit of continuity that's messing me up a little bit. I can try to block out an idea for where I think the lighting might go if it was actually in a proper spot. And actually, as I block out where this lighting might actually end, it kind of creates an interesting little graphical shape. So maybe I'll just leave it there for now. Um, so once again, a common theme, let's try to make things a little bit less boxy, especially with these arms, they kind of flatten down into the sides and we can make the shoulder even have a little more depth and things like that as well. I think the next thing I mention, and it's really a pet peeve of mine, is just the hairline. Anytime someone makes a hairline and it's way too clean, it always strikes me as being very off-putting. I don't know, it used to be a thing in CG art, like in movies and stuff, the hairline was always too clean and that just throws off your whole immersion. They're always a bit messy. There's always a bit of hair just running away. There's always maybe a little bit of saturation where the hairline starts. There's just a little bit more personality you could be throwing in there. So if I throw in a little bit of that around the neck, it instantly makes it feel a lot better. At least to me, I feel like that's the main paint over thing you could take away from this. I'm also going to spend a bunch of time trying to render out the ear. I don't know why. It wasn't a huge issue, but it just kind of looked a little off. So I was messing around trying to figure out if I can get it right from this angle but I wasn't doing the best job. I don't know, I gotta practice my ears a bit more. It's been a long time since I did my anatomy quick tips on that. Well, I think that's mostly it. Some minor touch-ups here and there, but I think we're pretty much done. So that's it for that paint over. Up next, we have an interior environment painting of a tavern, I guess, by Marcos. Now I want you all to think very quickly, what is the thing in this image that is the most out of perspective? Because it feels like there's a lot of little perspective things that you could nitpick, but there's one thing that really stands out to me. Did you guess it? It's those barrels on the right side. I appreciate that you tried to do them as ellipses, thinking about perspective, but if you think about perspective as it kind of flattens out toward our periphery, 
it should always be much more closer to an actual circle. The best way to visualize this is to just think about a bunch of dishes lying on the floor. So if you set a dish down at your feet and then just kept placing dishes farther and farther away, the one at your feet would look a lot like an actual circle. You're looking straight down at it. And as they got farther away, they would become more and more flattened into narrower and narrower ellipses. So I'm just gonna be in Photoshop this time and I'm gonna quickly just bring out those barrels. I'm just gonna select them and make them nice and round. And that already makes me feel a lot better. Although the perspective is still a bit off. If I were to make a line on every perspective line that I could find in this image, I'd find that they don't quite match up as well as they could. It's not horribly off, but there's definitely a little bit of wiggle room there. Overall, that's a bit of a tough fix though. I don't wanna to have to go through and try to really polish up the perspective. So let's focus on a different and even more important issue, and that is the lack of cold and warm tones. If you see this image, it's basically warm from top to bottom. It all has this very warm feel. There's not any cool tones going on whatsoever. And not only are there no real cool tones, but there's no real dynamic sense of lighting. Luckily, we can fix both of these things by making a really strongly dynamic lighting scheme. So in order to do that, I'm just going to duplicate one layer and make it super cool and darker. And this will be kind of like a shadow layer. And then I can just go in and erase a bunch of it to make it feel like there's some dynamic light pouring in from the opposite side. Instantly, this image will look 10 times better. There's dynamic lighting, there's cool and warm tones. We can keep playing around with details and adding more warm and cool elements, maybe a torch on the wall that really sets it more in a fantasy setting. And that actually brings me into a couple more issues I have that you can probably fix with this piece. First of all, the details and forms you did add, such as the door and the beam in the background, they, they feel very, I don't know, conservative. They don't quite go as extreme as they could. The door can be more sunken in, the beam could be a lot wider, and we just want to feel like there's a lot more going on because we have this basically flat wall taking up half the image. So we want to really break up that form and add a lot more depth to things. But after that, the one thing I really want to go into is just this general feeling of non-believability. I think that comes from the lack of maybe reference details. I don't know how much research you did, but I feel like if you look at some pictures of different taverns and things, you really want to focus in on some smaller details and maybe you can add something. Um, ideally, you also want to think about how's this whole area being lit? Is it just natural light? Is there a window somewhere? Because we don't see any windows in the piece. You, you want to give it some kind of lived in logic. But overall, I think we made some dramatic improvements in a very short amount of time. So that was a bit of fun. Moving along though, this next painting is by Kirsty, and she actually had some specific questions about the struggle of making finished images and not just giving up once it reaches roughly this stage. That's definitely a tough question, and there are a lot of possible factors for getting fatigued on an image. One possibility is that the image doesn't have enough strong graphical elements to it, which I find happens to me a lot. So maybe you're rendering an area in a painting that feels very ambiguous, and that will always lead to a quick feeling of fatigue. It just drains your energy, and that lack of a strong direction really weighs on you. For instance, all of the area below the head seems to lack a confident sense of shape design. I probably wouldn't even know how to render them out because they don't have any strong direction they're telling me. If you take things back down a level and try to focus on really punching up the shapes, it tends to relieve some of the stress that can come from polishing the image. The hair can be re-simplified and shaped into more exciting shapes as well. I think if the light and dark areas have enough graphical appeal built in, the main thing you'll be doing in terms of finishing is just choosing where to make subtle little gradations within those shapes, such as adding bounce light into shadows, and also just punching in maybe 20% more detail into the breaks between these shapes. After that, just softening some facial planes is really all there is to do. Polishing and finishing an image should always feel very constructed and obvious as to where you should go. 
If it doesn't feel very obvious, then just rework your simple shapes and try to get to a much more appealing factor. Well, I started playing around with the horns at the top, but that was just for a bit of curiosity. They, they kind of looked fine in the direction they were going. I just wanted to see what different directions would look like, but there's a decent flow to them. I'm not quite sure what the actual meaning for like them being very flat on one side is and all that, but if you wanted to bring that to a more finished level, you could always just add in a little punch of detail somewhere, somewhere appealing just to make the horn things even stand out more. Maybe some little touch of gold or silver or something. Anyway, the last painting I have for you guys is by Kenpachi. Right away, I can blur my eyes and see that this one is struggling with shape recognition. The idea of an image should be relatively visible at any size. When shrinking this down, you can see how difficult it becomes to figure out just what's going on. The light and dark areas don't define the forms well enough, so the quickest and easiest fix is to simply add a bit of light behind the dark silhouette of your demon character. Just remember, composition doesn't work based on a drawing. It works based on the value map and lighting. Once the demon guy is made visible though, it brings us into a whole other issue. His actual silhouette is just a box shape, so there's no good way to ramp up the dynamicism with just a paint over. I could polish it a bunch, but it's still just going to be a box, so instead I'll just smear paint around for a bit and try to form some slightly more dynamic shapes for a focal element. Parts of it can certainly be simple and boxy, but there always needs to be something of interest that will break away from that. The horns seem like the easiest answer, so I'll just really focus on those, and I can try various poses, but in the end, we really only need one dynamic feature, so everything else can actually be more boxy and simplified, as long as they're serving to benefit the main graphical element. Alright, since there is no dynamic primary light source, this is also a really good candidate to just go wild with some secondary rim light. So that is a bit of fun, and I'm going to go back to the original painting now. I considered trying to paint out whatever it is it actually looked like from the tiny thumbnail, but I just ran out of time, so sorry about that. For all of these paint overs, I do my best to finish them in roughly 20 or 30 minutes of actual painting. It's easy to just get wrapped up in an image, so I always gotta make sure I cut myself off. I guess that's going to do it for this episode. I would like to give a big thank you to everyone that let me mess around with their art this time. Sorry it was delayed by almost a month. If any of you wonderful people watching would like to have your art in an episode, be sure to hop on over to my Patreon. Alright, thank you all so much for watching, and an extra thank you to the wonderful patrons, big and small, that keep this channel going strong. See you, everyone.